Becoming a doctor requires incredibly long hours of study, years of effort, and for most people in the US, substantial, soul-crushing debt. However, one genius teen decided to achieve his medical dreams without going to all the trouble. He just put on a lab coat and started treating patients. It turns out the state of Florida was less impressed than he had hoped and ended up laying several charges against him. But how did Dr. Love, yeah, he really went by Dr. Love, fake being a doctor in the first place? And how did he get away with it for so long? We sent our experts as undercover patients to find out, and some of them returned safe and sound to tell their story. Before we start, we know exactly how cliché it is to have a story like this from Florida, and we'd like to emphasize that we are sure there are plenty of normal, well-adjusted, stable people living in the Sunshine State, but those are never the people we come across in our research. From a young age, Malachi Love Robinson knew he wanted to help people when he grew up by becoming a doctor. However, the road to medicine apparently seemed pretty long and arduous to the young teen. At some point, he decided, why bother with school when he could just start working in medicine? In fact, why not just open an entire medical center of his own? At 18, Love Robinson founded and opened the New Birth New Life Medical Center in West Palm Beach, Florida. And while that suspiciously sounds like a health clinic for the Church of Scientology, it was regarded by its unsuspecting patients as a normal medical office. But how can a teen just put on a white coat and a stethoscope and pose as a doctor? Well, apparently Malachi went to great lengths to try to stay one step ahead of the law. Though Malachi called himself Dr. Love and listed himself as such on the center's website, he added only the initials PhD and HHPC after his name. PhD holders are not necessarily medical doctors, and HHPC are initials used by those who work in home health and personal care. He carefully avoided putting the initials MD anywhere online. So what did Love Robinson have a PhD in? And why did no one find it suspicious that a baby-faced 18-year-old was claiming to have a doctorate degree in running a medical center? After all, as anyone who has been to grad school will tell you, no one obtains a PhD without getting a few stress wrinkles, gray hairs, and anxiety disorders. Well, no one really knows, because even after Love Robinson went live on air after his arrest and spoke to journalists, clearly there was no PR person on hand to strongly advise him against that particular choice. He refused to disclose what subject he held his PhD in, or where it was from. We have a sneaking suspicion that that degree might not exist at all. Regarding his age, Dr. Love lied online to make himself older. On healthgrades.com, where he created his professional profile, he described himself as a 25-year-old, well-rounded professional. Given doctor's notoriously terrible handwritings, that typo didn't set off any alarms. Furthermore, Dr. Love advocated a more alternative approach to medicine. In his profile, he declared that he utilizes physiological, psychological, and mechanical methods such as air, water, light, heat, and earth to treat patients. While that sounds like the advice most LA-based $200 an hour spiritual guides give, it's less in line with the specialties of most actual medical doctors. As far as we know, there is no air, water, and light rotation in residency. However, patients kept returning to Dr. Love. After all, how could someone open and operate a whole medical center while being an unlicensed teenager? Patients assumed he must have been adequately trained. Strangely enough, it turns out the clinic ended up setting off alarm bells for law enforcement within a few months. Police sent an undercover officer to New Birth New Life Medical Center to see Dr. Love. After the officer reported that Love had physically examined him and dispensed medical advice, he was arrested for practicing medicine without a license. However, the arrest didn't stick initially, not to mention that many questions remained. For example, how did Dr. Love even get the money to found the New Birth New Life Medical Center? Details on this are unclear, though some of the other charges laid against him might provide an educated guess, as Love Robinson apparently had no problem operating with other people's money and credit histories. In 2015, that same year he was arrested for playing doctor, an 86-year-old patient of Dr. Love accused him of stealing $34,000. Turns out Love Robinson was using the money for car payments and credit card loans. We can only assume part of those loans had been used to rent and establish this bogus medical clinic. Malachi was arrested on suspicion of fraud and larceny. Since the concept of learning from your mistakes was apparently alien to Love Robinson, while waiting to see what would happen with his charges, he went ahead and dabbled in some fraud again. This time, he tried to buy a Jaguar and listed an elderly woman he referred to as his godmother as a cosigner. When employees got suspicious that this elderly, not obviously related woman wasn't even present at the car dealership and was being offered up to guarantee credit, hey, we didn't say his schemes were foolproof, they decided to run a quick Google search on Love Robinson. 
they found that, surprise, he had already been arrested at least twice for fraud. When law enforcement checked with the woman listed on the car's paperwork, she said she was a distant relative who was unaware of the car purchase and was certainly not going to help Love Robinson buy it. Third time's a charm, and this third arrest finally stuck. In March 2017, Malachi pleaded guilty to two fraud charges, including providing a false statement to obtain credit. The judge, perhaps using the defendant's extremely young age as a mitigating factor – Malachi was 20 at the time of sentencing – suspended nine years of his 10-year jail sentence. Love Robinson also got another break when he took a plea deal to resolve his 14 charges of fake doctoring, and ended up serving less than three and a half years his charges would require. However, the judge warned Malachi to be on his best behavior from here on out, as any further arrests could land him in jail for a much longer time. When Love Robinson was finally released from prison in September 2019, he learned his lesson and decided to change course, follow the right path and get a steady job, rebuild his life. Just kidding, he completely ignored the judge's advice and went back to committing fraud for kicks. Malachi started working for United States of Freight, a shipping company in Delray Beach, Florida, as well as a great title for the next Purge sequel. He slowly came to the obvious realization that his salary was substantially less than the money the company was making as a whole. So a few months in, he started requesting that clients send their payments to his personal bank account instead of the company account. He had clients PayPal or Venmo his personal checking account, while in some other circumstances he set up fake company accounts, such as for National Logistics Division LLC, which authorities realized were tied to his name and home address. Law enforcement officials estimate he amassed over $10,000 to his personal account in this manner. When Daniel O'Sullivan, Malachi's boss, became suspicious over missing payments, he confronted Malachi in private. Love Robinson apologized profusely and said he would correct the situation because he didn't want to go to jail. While that statement is understandable, it did very little to appease the boss he had stolen from. Malachi insisted he would pay back all the money he had taken, however, those payments never materialized. O'Sullivan went to the police, who arrested Malachi at the end of 2020. So, why does Love Robinson engage in such substantial fraud, living out his catch-me-if-you-can lifestyle? Moreover, why has he done it so many times knowing there's no possible way he can evade authorities forever, while also failing to truly admit any wrongdoing? After all, he told journalists and others that he never actually pretended to be a doctor, just a naturopath. However, multiple patients reported that Dr. Love had presented himself as an MD and even had those initials at the end of his name on his clinic door. Malachi also repeatedly claims to have a PhD, though refuses to tell anyone, including reporters and investigators, in what field he holds it. The first time Love Robinson was arrested, authorities took him in for psychiatric observation, as requested by Florida's Baker Act. After all, Malachi seemed to have completely lost touch with reality and was doubling down on it to authorities in a way that seemed, well, crazy. The Baker Act allows for involuntary examination and institutionalization of an individual for up to 72 hours if they display signs of mental illness that may be dangerous. Judges, law enforcement officers, and doctors all can initiate institutionalization under the Baker Act. So we know Malachi at least came off as impaired enough to warrant forced examination for mental illness, however doctors couldn't find anything wrong with him mentally. One of his first lawyers also explored a mental health defense, but while he tried to find a way to make it stick by giving the defendant a possible diagnosis, the doctors he hired still couldn't find anything wrong. Malachi himself seems to reject any hints of mental health issues. He told a WPF-TV25 reporter, This story was broadcast everywhere like I'm some insane maniac that's just out here doing crazy things. Love Robinson himself had a much simpler explanation for his actions. In a broadcast interview from prison, he stated, I was a young kid that got overly ambitious and just said to hell with the rules and regulations. So, there you go kids, just follow your dreams. Except make sure you're not doing anything that could land you in jail or harming anyone by pretending to be a medical expert and doctor. Yeah, we're looking at you, Gwyneth Paltrow. Now that you've learned the story of Malachi Love Robinson, Florida's most infamous teen doctor, what's the craziest fraud you've ever heard of? Let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, maybe spend a few minutes looking up your physician's credentials and then watch this video right here, or the one up next.